And welcome back to the last part of this opening. Now this chunk, this chunk will blow your mind. This is just pure gold. I mean, this stuff's a little eh, but this stuff's decent. Like, we'll see. So yeah, this definitely is a money maker right here. I'm just gonna shuffle it up so like, no, no, no not shuffle, but as always, I'll uh, give you a little code card on the start of this. There you go, Primal Clash. I know they're really old, but like I said, there's only six like or so code cards in this, plus the packs from one of the earlier sections. We have ourselves a Sylveon EX Full Art with a nice little, you know, nice little thing. Might see some play at the World's Tournament. We have ourselves a Radiant, our Generations uh, Radiant Collection Gardevoir EX with a nice little full art kind of with all the previous forms in the back, which is beautiful. Not the more playable one, but definitely nice looking. A Mega, sorry, a Meloetta EX. This one doesn't have a texture because it's also from uh, Legendary Treasures. Another Sylveon. By the way, these aren't in order like the other ones were. We have ourselves a Flareon. Nice full art. Wish they would have done a different art for this one this one. And also make this one's tack not so bad. This one was really good. But they just made a different art where they put this one in the front and the other two on the side. And this one in the front and the other two on the side. That'd be really nice. Got ourselves a Team Aqua's Kyogre. Uh, Kyogre? Well, one of the two. Regardless, it's pretty neat. Has, uh, I think that's Archie down there hidden away underneath some of the text. And his lieutenant. Got ourselves another Flareon. Another Gardevoir. A Blastoise from the, uh, what was it, the Generations Collection Box, the ones that were showing off, you know, these ones are really cool. They have about uh, three or so Pokemon in the back, Gyarados, get yourself a Vaporeon, very nice. I preferred the Charizard card, but there's also this one. Actually, the Venusaur is pretty nice because it has a Cypher in it, I'm happy about that. We got ourselves a Pikachu EX card. Pikachu, not really playable, but you know, he's a he's a flagship character of the show. There's just so many cards of him. So many promotional items with him. Heck, this box behind is his face. But anyways, you already knew that. Uh, this one's kind of neat. It has a, you know, a in the back because he does it on the show. And a Jolt, sorry, not Joltik, but kind of looks like a Joltik. A Jolteon. Hey, look, another Mega Gar sorry, Gardevoir. Now this one's nice. This box back here. It had two promos in it. I just picked one of these up the other day for about five bucks. And here's another one. So, and this one's in better condition, so I'm happy about that. This was one of the gems in this box. But the, you know what? If you see this box, I might clue in. Where's the other gem? Well, stay tuned to find out. Here's a Primal Groudon EX. Uh, it's Mega. Sorry, Michael. Well, it's Primal, but, you know, it's kind of... Who's not, I'm not really sure what blah, blah, blah. There's a different naming from uh, let's see, Gaia Volcano, if there's a stadium card in play, this attack does 100 more damage, so 200 can hit from almost everything. Maybe for a choice ban or something that just, just slightly softens your opponent up, nothing's gonna withstand that. That's pretty amazing. A Darkrai EX Full Art. Now this card, Tur Turbo Darkrai, was one of the strongest decks in the uh, format back in the X and Y block. It just, you just powered it up with uh, putting as many Dark Energies as you can on your bench. There's a Dark Patch, there's a, another one, a GX that Brings, comes back from the discard and brings an energy with it. Charges up really quick. Turn two, you're hitting for like 160. Then we got ourselves a regular Groudon. Maybe I should have organized these and put them in kind of like a revealing fashion where, you know, the Mega comes out to this one. But isn't this a beaut? Like, look at those nice gold colors. Nice gold lineage on the uh, card. Very nice full art. Texture, yeah. Very nice. Got a Mega Altaria, which is... Yeah, kind of neat. It was kind of I tried it once or twice online if there's any special energy on it You can heal up a bit so kept it alive kind of like a 250 HP almost Megas are nice. I just traded one of these away about a few weeks ago a Mega Blast OEC X Full Art Looks like I almost have enough uh, things except for Charizard, Mega Charizard to actually make like a uh, Dex with them. That'd be kind of neat to have like a, a little tr trio deck where you kind of insert your Mega kind of situation Ah, the Mew EX from the promo box this card allowed previous Mew EXs from, I want to say, black and white somewhere. I don't know if it was black and white first one or whatever, but it doesn't matter. It made a really cool card come back for so long. It was in the format for like five, six years. This versatile attack allows you to use any attack on the field. There is a Jolteon, a nice little trick I did called a, well, just a lock deck, where I had a Jolteon that says, hey, 
if you are a basic, you can't damage me. And I had a Glaceon that says, hey, if you're an evolution, you wouldn't, you can't damage me. And there's also a, a Reggie Ice on the be a bench that would say, hey, if you're an EX, you can't damage me. So you could just pick one of those attacks and just be completely bulletproof, practically. Sure, they could switch in this and that. It had a low HP, so you, there's a chance they could get through, but it was next to impossible. Uh, this card I looked online, 25 bucks right now. That is a nice find for this box. Very nice. Very nice alternate art. Okay, and that's the, the, I guess the gem for this one. We're going to be moving into the GX era. By the way, there was, uh, let's see, 18 full arts there for the EX eras. And some of them were pretty good. There's a little peekaboo up here. I'm just going to tuck you down. Got ourselves an X and Y base set code card. This one, here you go. And now we got ourselves something kind of neat. And something kind of bad. I mean, or I uh, see it's kind of like right there. Okay. Oh, I mean, I'm revealing so much here, but I'm just going to grab this guy. He got an alternate art because he was already in the Shining Legends set. And this one's a promo. Instead of reprinting Entei here, they should have made a Suicune card and did not mess up the trio. It would have been nice to have a beautiful trio. So many people would have went for that. Now everybody's just mad there isn't one. People say maybe, maybe, just maybe they might be one in the next upcoming sets. But it's not completely likely. Like, let's... It's so sad. This one is completely unplayable. Flip a coin of Tails' this attack does 50 damage to itself, so it basically makes you from a EX Pokemon to a really not so great Pokemon. 150 is somewhat nice, but that energy cost is just not good. This attack does 100 damage to each of your Pokemon that has energy attached to it, but like, geez, that's just such an expensive cost. Entei's just slightly a hair more playable. They could have done better with these. Uh, this is the one code card that was in this set that I thought was pretty cool, I found, and I uh, totally dibsed it. Uh, because, I mean, heck, it's a promo, it's a special one. I like, don't mind giving out, you know, uh, old code cards and whatnot. This one's kind of already been used, I showed it off already. But, uh, yeah. This one, I, I, I kind of claim this one. Too bad there wasn't one for the big box. This is also a promo. A, uh, it was Feramosa GX here. Pretty neato. I have a uh, Full Art, another one. And then we got ourselves a Muck. Wanna, yep, Muck. That's pretty neato. Got ourselves a Ho Ho. There's almost enough Ho Ho's in here. Well, there's two in here, and there is one or two that I have in my collection, so maybe I should make a Ho Ho deck. There's a big Snorlax with the giant attack costs, but you can get this working. It's not the hardest, surprisingly. A Celestia GX. I didn't actually have one of these. This is the promo one. I'm so happy to have one of these. I just need to get. Myself a, uh, what's that called? The uh, Katana GX, I think it is. Yeah, just a Katana. And then we got ourselves an Espeon, which is a very playable GX card. I think I'm going to try doing this little special deck for my league where I'll have six EVs above the four, I know, but it's just going to be a special little deck for the professor to use against, uh, you know, people and maybe they can get a prize card or something like something cool for winning against it. Maybe it won't be too compatible. Maybe it would just be a fun, fun one. But what I, my plan is, is that I'm going to have myself. One second. So the plan is to have one of every evolution, sorry, evolution in the set. I already have more Umbreons, I, but this is an alternate art. They consider this alternate art one kind of a full art online, but I don't really see it because it doesn't feel like a full art. And yeah, this Espeon is something I'm going to get uh, one of every evolution. I know there's seven of them once the other uh, Jolteon, Vaporeon, Flareons come out. And just make a little Eevee deck. They're also making an Eevee EX, GX, sorry. So I'm going to make a little EV deck. It's going to have rainbow energy and a bunch of random energies with the energy evolution EVs. And they're just going to evolve into whichever energy I have at the time. So that's a cool little thing I'd like to do. Okay, continuing. We have ourselves a Mega Gardevoir. Sorry, Gardevoir GX. I'm pretty sure there was another one in the binder. Uh, that makes two. Gardevoir GX was one of the cards that actually won the World Championships. At one point, this card was $22, $23. But then it took a nosedive and now it's worth about 6 bucks. But still, it's pretty cool. Here we have the Secret Spring ability, allows you to accelerate energy, very nice. Two energies, three energies per turn, that's pretty great. Infinite energy, it's like Mewtwo GX's, sorry, EX's um, attack, but, you know, just better, because you can get away with just one such. And then this one, Zorark, now this one I'm going to probably trade away, because there's something else in here. Uh, Zorark is a really good card with the trade ability, it can, it's a nice deck engine. Uh, at one point these cards were going for $15 a pop, uh... They took a big nosedive because of Buzzwall just destroying the meta lately. Uh, damn pesty mosquito. Uh, but regardless, I think it's nice. I have myself a playset. I have uh, quite a few of these now, so I think I'm going to start training a few of them away. 
Next, we move on to a shiny Tapu Koko. I believe it's since it's orange and black, it's the alternate coloring. That's pretty neat. Um, I think I need to make a deck for every single one. Uh, too bad there wasn't a Bulu here, and it's funny that I mentioned Bulu. Okay, so we're gonna continue. We got ourselves a Tapu Fini. Don't actually have a Bulu in general, uh, but here is a Tapu Fini GX. Uh, nothing too great. I used it in my Mega Scissor deck because it was Rainbow Energy attachment to use a GX attack, just messed up their plan for a second. Okay, we're gonna continue. We got ourselves another Dark Rye. We just had ourselves one in off camera. One second. Just gotta. Oh, almost. Don't want to wreck it in the process. There you go. Secondary Dark Rye. So maybe I can make some type of weird Turbo Dark Rye deck that's kind of not complete because I only have one. Yeah, regardless. No, that's not gonna be a thing. So we're gonna keep going. Ooh, what's that? You ask. There's another code card. Behind here is something worth 35 bucks. In the collection that I bought, there was a Tapu Fini GX. Holy smoke, now I got two of them. Now I can play against all the other pro players and keep up because I have enough stuff. But that's pretty nice, a Tapu Fini GX. Here's a code card, by the way. I'll just try to, you know, orchestrate the right ways for you. There you go. It's a little blurry because of my lighting situation. Yeah, Tapu Fini GX. And now we're moving on to the full arts. But I mean, this is by far enough of a gem at its own, but that's just crazy. Tapu Fini GX. There was a Zorar GX from the Zorar GX box, which is pretty good. Now I have a play set of the full arts. I'm happy with that. I'll trade away my two regular arts to people so they can keep up and have some spicy plays. There was a Ho Ho, and there was also another Ho Ho box, but they sold it to a different person. Uh, too bad it was a Rainbow Rare, and that's one of the few cards that I'd say deserves a Rainbow Rare, because it means the Rainbow Bird. It can almost make it work. Uh, and one problem with Ho-Ho, though, is, is that this Pokemon can't use this attack on its next turn, and there was another one, there was another few cards that, after they attack, they just can do nothing, where this next card comes into play, and is an- oh, wrong one. The, the next card comes into pl the next- the next card comes into play, and that's this Dawn Wings Necrozma with the Invasion ability. The Invasion ability allows it to move in, then you can use a thing that allows it to float out, uh, retreat. Float Zone's rotating out, they're probably not going to reprint it, it's been in there for seven years. Escape Board would make this one retreat cost less, but you know, oh well. So I'm just going to knock those two off the pedestal here. And an Espeon GX Full Art. This is my third Evolution Full Art, so that's kind of neato. And uh, yeah, there's that. And we have more code cards, so, so we're gonna hit another little section of this video. So yeah, no, this one's pretty. This one's really playable. It's probably one of the more playable EVs out of all of them. The Glaceon looks pretty good, but this is the one that's seeing a lot of play. Okay, so next we got ourselves big review, a Alolan Muck GX Hyper Rare. Now this card's going for about ten bucks. Nothing too special, but it is the only Hyper Rare in this whole set uh, of collection. So I thought it was pretty cool. Here, feel free to pause and, you know, try to figure out this code upside down. Computer speak. Side of sign. So yeah, just an Alolan Muck GX. Pretty neato, hyper rare. Maybe I might make that as a deck. It's a little fun thing. And then we're moving on to, oh, just to do a recap here. There was uh, 7 Full Art GXs and 18 regular GXs. Nice stuff. Nice, nice stuff. One Rainbow Rare. The next card is somewhat cool. I don't know, I'd argue it's better than this one. It's Thanos' Infinity Stone. Not the middle one of that metal one that I'm looking for, but definitely a nice card. Uh, this card's going for about $22 US. That is amazing. Uh, I like to trade it out for a, what is it called? A steel version that was in the same set because there's Lunala and Solgaleo's cards, but I run metal memes, so I'd love to have that. Might hold on to this one. It's my first secret rare. Maybe I'll trade some stuff and get it. Like, like maybe I'll trade away a few years, like a good handful of VXs, and try to collect all the colors of the rainbow. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing. And this one, I'm so happy for because I finally got it, but at the same time, a little bit sad because I got it one month away from rotation. A full art Professor Sycamore. Now, Full Art Professor Sycamore was a $25 card because it was a uh, four of in every deck. Everybody loved it. And I'm just, this is the set that I got it back into. Um, you can't really see it, but this Phantom Forces, I was back in the X and Y block. That's when I, X and Y, it's upside down, but you know, deal. 
I'm so happy to get one of these since I am a Pokemon professor and I judge, you know, a Pokemon League and whatnot. But I, I didn't think I was going to get one. Got one just a little too late. But, you know, I'm still really happy to add it to my collection. It'll definitely be in a sleeve. I'll play with it in my expanded decks. Love you, buddy. Chessman's cool, too. Uh, you know, Froakie's better. Uh, then there was a Misty's Determination. Followed by a second Determined Misty. Uh, that's kind of neat. I might try trading one of these away for a Brock Grit, or uh, I think that's what it's called. Uh, Misty was actually a card I was using in my scissor deck for a while because it just was a nice little thing. Let's see what it says. Just got a card from your hand. Look at the top eight. Pick one of them. Put them in your hand. There you go. Shuffle afterwards. Pretty good. So now we got a few more gems in here. I don't know if there's anything too amazing past uh, the Secret Rare Energy and the Lele and the Full Art Trainer. But then we're going to move on to, I believe, our only Secret Rare Trainer, which is a Golden VS Seeker with a nice little Pokeball down there. But yeah, no, VS Seeker was an amazing card. A regular VS Seeker was going for about 10 bucks a card for the longest time. But this one here uh, was going for about, I think, 15 to 20 and then it dropped because uh, it switched out and got rotated out. This card was a Secret Rare. It allowed the VS Seeker to stay legal for an extra year because it was printed the one year after the cutoff, sorry, the one set after the cutoff date and allowed all the previous ones to come back. This is pretty nice. Now I got one of these in my collection. Pretty pimped out little cell phone. Love it. And now here by far is one of the best arts I've ever seen on a card for Darkrai. Look how sinister and dark that looks. It's so blah, like, you know, it's just, it looks evil. Like it's coming through another dimension. And when it comes through, it's only fading into reality ever so briefly and uh, maybe that's not quite the way to say it, but geez, a dark cry and Celestia, sorry, a Celestia legend card. This was a two piece card. You need the other piece to play it, and it had two attacks usually, and it added added is sorry, it was both dark and psychic. Very nice. Now the next card I believe is a prime. Yeah, Ursa Ring Prime. Uh, I found it. Well, I found another one of these little hard top sleeves there. And on the back of it had a sticker. It said Ursara, sorry, Ursa Ring Prime, ten dollars. Now it's not really a ten dollar card in my opinion, but it's still definitely a nice old hard gold soul silver. I believe that's uh, unleashed. Yeah, that's unleashed because it has an Entei face, and it's like a dog on a leash. That's how you remember that one, boys and girls. Boy, uh, yeah, pretty nice, pretty cool thing. Uh, nothing too much I could say about it except for it has a very nuclear attack, but that's not really that great. Okay, next card we have is a, probably another old rare card. Ah, Dialga Level X. Now, Level Xs are like breaks. You evolve them on top, they can use the previous abilities. This one was, I think, pretty playable. I can't quite remember, but this is a pro... I just realized it's a, a promo version. Diamond Pearl 17, very early in the block. Um, yeah, people liked it. 80 damage was not bad. Uh, can't attack, but you could use the previous one. Time skip. Let's see what it says. Once before you attack, you may leave your opponent's... Uh, sorry, you may... Sorry, yeah. Sorry for the uh, blah blah blah. Once during your attack, before are you sorry? Once your turn, yeah, god dang it. Once during your turn, before you may attack, you may have your opponent flip two coins. If both of them are heads, your turn ends. If both of them are tails, after your opponent draws a card at the beginning of his turn, uh, his turn ends. Just shut down that turn. Uh, this attack can't be used. The Dialga was affected by a special condition, so. It might get you out of a tricky situation. I love Dialga. He's one of my favorite. He's my probably second favorite legendary after Ho Ho. Also, back to that Muck and the, the Ra Rainbow Rare. I think Muck is just one of the only cards that. Sorry. I don't like Rainbow Rares. I really don't. I think they're kind of hideous to look at. However, I'd have to say that since Muck is kind of like sludgy and rainbow y, like he actually kind of looks similar to this without being a rainbow card like blue and yellow and purple and whatnot, this is an acceptable card to have a rainbow rare of. Just wanted to chime in for that one, my critique of it. Okay, next card we have ourselves is a Shining Rayquaza. I'm going to end this on a bang with some uh, shining stars of this video. Uh, not quite, I mean there's plenty of stars in this video. Followed by a Genesec, which is actually one of my favorite Pokemon. I'm so happy to get another one of those. The Rayquaza is pretty amazing too. And two Volcanians. Yeah, two Volca Shining Volcanians. Sorry, Volcanion. Bah. This has uh, been a, a bit of a ride to review for this collection. I'm completely psyched. I imagine this collection is worth at least, at least, I want to say $500. Maybe up to 7 
I'm so happy. Thanks for watching this long, uh, long as heck video. I gotta clean up all that over there and the stuff that's. That's right, I already got rid of most of that stuff. There's all these tins and things and stuff there. Thanks for watching Northern Pokemon opening. Can't wait to make more videos and I'll see you next time. Catch you later.